Everybody loves Nixie clocks. Whenever anyone comes over to my house, the first thing they ask is, where did you get that clock? But that's not an easy question to answer because Nixie clocks aren't manufactured by big companies. You can't just pop into a high street store and pick one up. They're handmade by enthusiasts and often sold individually on eBay. And usually only a handful of each model is made. You see, Nixie tubes were never supposed to be used in household devices. In their heyday in the 1960s and early 70s, they were mostly used in scientific equipment. You'll often spot them in TV shows from the 60s and 70s, like in the title sequence to The Six Million Dollar Man. A few early 1970s calculators were made with Nixies, but by the mid-70s the technology was replaced by smaller, cheaper segmented displays like LED and LCD. And by the time digital displays made it into the homes in the late 1970s, in devices like clock radios and video recorders, nothing contained Nixie tubes. Nixie tubes continued to be manufactured in Russia all the way up to the late 1980s, presumably as spares for old equipment, and it's these tubes that are still being sold on eBay as new old stock to electronic hobbyists. The Nixie tubes resurgence began sometime in the 1990s when these hobbyists started using them to make clocks. People are attracted to the steampunk, neon glow retro aesthetic of the glass tubes, containing 10 ready formed closely stacked numbers. In my opinion, Nixie tubes are still the most attractive way to display digits electronically. But it's not just hobbyists that appreciate the unique look of Nixie tubes. The displays in Monsters Inc. are all Nixies, and they feature prominently in Call of Duty Black Ops, the numbers Mason, what do they mean? And Apple even showed their love by including a Nixie clock face on their sixth generation iPod Nano. So yes, everybody loves Nixie tubes, and what better way to express that than to carry one around on your wrist in the Mi Esposito watch from Copisro. This is a single tube watch, and the reason for using just the one tube is because it allows the designer and manufacturer, Michelle, to make the world's smallest Nixie watch, and also make it solar powered. Yes, that's right, this is a solar powered Nixie watch and it will run for a full year on one charge if you view it 30 times a day. Now this watch won't appeal to everyone and it's definitely not supposed to. Michelle will only be making a handful of these. Watches have a different appeal for different people. For some they're just a timepiece, for others they're an expensive piece of jewellery or a status symbol. But then there's other watches for people who will pay a fortune for a handcrafted timepiece with a unique or unusual mechanism. And in many ways, this Nixie watch will appeal to those same people, but maybe ones with a smaller budget who wouldn't want to pay more for their watch than they do for their house. Now, the cost of the Mi Esposito watch reflects that it is the work of one man who assembles these by hand, and as and when he makes them, he's been listing them on eBay, and the first couple sold for approximately £700, that's about US dollars Now, those buyers of those watches appreciate that if they didn't buy one now, the chances are they would miss out entirely. So given that most people watching this video will never get the opportunity to get one of these watches let's take a close look at it here to see what you're missing out on it is of course a chunky watch with a thick strap on it but it doesn't look out of place at all it doesn't look ridiculous it's quite nicely proportioned the sides of it have got a design on i'll show you a bit about that in a second on the back copisro is the manufacturer's name me esposita is the model and there's a serial number and a date on there as well now those sides can be removed and replaced with other ones if you want to change the design up a little bit. They're just held in place by two magnets, they're little metal bars, and you can just pull both of them off at either side and then swap them out with some others. They've supplied some examples, I've got a stainless steel one here, and I've got another one that's got some sort of grains of sand from the world's whitest beach ingrained in it. Um, there's a little bit of a design one here, and then we've got a plain black, well a glossy black one if you want to sort of tone it down a little bit, but I'll be honest I preferred the one that it came with, it's more in keeping with the strap and the overall design. And I suppose if you were artistic, you could design some of these yourself, and it's possible the manufacturer might even come out with some more designs as well. So it's a nice little feature, that. Now, to operate the watch, there's two buttons on the top and three little contact points. You've got to connect those two together to get it to work. I'll show you how that works. If I tap the right-hand ones, you can see I get the time, 13.40. I'll tap it again to show you that once more, 13.40. 
And then to see the date, you just tap the left one, 27, that's the 27th of the month. If you hold it a bit longer, you get the 27th of October, 2013. Now, if we do the same with the right one, if we tap it and then tap it again to hold it down, we get the seconds on that one. So you can see 47, 48, and 49. Now this watch has a surprising number of clever features. The first one involves these solar panels. Of course, you need to know how much charge your battery has in it. Now, if it was fully charged, there'd be a little green LED that was showing underneath the Nixie tube. It's not there at the moment, means it's not fully charged. Let's find out what the charge level is. Tap both buttons together, I get a nine showing. Nine's as high as it can go without putting on the green LED. So it's almost fully charged. Another neat feature, motion activation. You can set this in the different settings i'll show you later on but just look what happens lift my sleeve up shows me the time 14 10. i'll do it again just to show you again 14 11. and that's uh, because it senses the light on the solar panels now you can also use it the other way so if you wave and block out the light you can have it display the time. So you can have motion activated time. Just wave your hand like magic over the watch and it will tell you what the time is. You can pretend you're some kind of magician to people. Another one is you can also have the watch show the time every five seconds like it's doing now. Of course, that's gonna burn through that battery charge pretty quickly, but you might want to have it like that if you're sort of walking around and wanna show off your watch to someone at a party or something like that. Now you'll need to know how many times that's activated, uh, especially if it was the motion activation. If you find your battery's running down pretty quickly, you'll need to know why is it always running down? Well, you can find out how many times your watch has told the time or displayed something by holding down those two buttons together. You see it said 404, then I'll show you again. It shows 405 now. So I've activated it 405 times since I reset that counter. Now to change the time and the date and other settings, first tap the right, then the left. Notice it's flashing the hours now, 14. So that's two o'clock, 24 hour mode. Moving it on, that's 15, 16. So you see, it's pretty easy to set. Even though it's got the one tube, everything's quite easy to understand as to what's going on. We'll move it onto the minutes. So you tap the left one, you can see there's the minutes, 19. So we'll just tap the right one to move on the minutes. And you can tap it or you can hold it down if you want to move through them a little bit quicker. As you can see there, we're moving through. Also notice the little yellow dot at the bottom right on the right hand side. That means we're in the minutes. It, when we were doing the hours, it was on the left hand side. Another little indicator to tell you what you're doing. So we've set it now. We'll hold down the left one and that's the time now. 13, 37. Now the settings in this watch are highly configurable to exactly how you want it to work. I'll show you how you get into these settings. They're like dip switches in a way. You get past the hours and the minute setting. And then the next thing that happens, you get into this thing here where you can see the number one with a dot either side of it. That means that's setting number one. It's got a zero after it, which is flashing, which means it's off at the moment. If we want to turn setting number one on, we tap the right one, which will bring a number one into that setting. Setting number one, by the way, is the five second automatic display mode. And then setting number two is motion sensor, whether you want the motion sensor on or off. Setting number four is the day brightness, how bright you want the tube to be during the day. And then setting number five is how bright you want it to be during the night. Of course, it can tell this based on the light coming into the solar panels. Setting number six is the scroll speed, how quickly you want the digits to display one after the other. Setting number seven, whether you want that motion activation to work when you take the watch out of your sleep and and have it to uh, receive light or whether you want it to work when you wave your hand over it blocking out the light momentarily you can also display the day before you display the date so you can have like a one i think is monday and then it would have the date and then the month and things i don't like that so i've switched that off and then you can have it in 12 or 24 hour mode and there's a few more settings beyond that where of course you set the date and things like that and also calibrate the time if it's running a little bit fast or slow as well now, I did mention nighttime there, which jogged my memory. I thought I should show you what it looks like in the dark. And here it is. It looks really nice, of course. All Nixie tubes always look good in the dark, but this one looks especially good. He's stuck a couple of blue LEDs in there so you can actually see the tube light up as well as the digits. Now, I do own another Nixie watch. It's this one from Cathode Corner. I've had this a couple of years. It's a great watch, two-digit Nixie watch. In fact, I think the reason that... 
Michel sent me over his watch is because he saw my video, which is very popular on YouTube, of the other watch. I'm not going to say these are competing watches head to head, which one's best, all that kind of nonsense. These are hobbyists making watches for enthusiasts. So buy whichever one you want, support the person that you want. If you can, buy both of them. But here they are side by side. I'll say one thing though, the Mi Esposito watch, I've been able to wear that all day long at work without anyone even noticing I had a strange watch on. The other one, I wouldn't be able to get away with that, I don't think. The missus almost likes this one as well. I mean, she doesn't hate it as much as the other one. Let's put it that way. Now, if you want to get hold of one of these watches, remember, you can't just pop down to the shops and pick one up. You need to go on eBay and search for the Copizro Mi Esposita Nixie watch. He'll put them on there as and when he makes them, but you're going to have to have pretty deep pockets. Remember, those first few sold for £711, which is about US dollars So get saving up. Now, I know that I'm very fortunate in having this watch, and I'd like to thank Michelle for putting this together. I don't know how he's done it. I mean, how does one chap design a case, a circuit board, program the whole thing, get the software working, get it all functioning in a tiny little case like this, soldering it together himself? I mean, it completely boggles the mind. So thanks to Michelle for doing this, and thanks to any other electronic hobbyists who are still keeping Nixie Tubes alive. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.